In the past year, plus a little, I have performed as Cello Cat at eight different times across five different anime, cosplay, comic conventions. I know that's not an astronomical number, but I'm pretty excited about the progress and the way that this part of my career is shaping up. I've had so much fun. I've connected with so many amazing people. I've had some stumbling blocks and some dark moments. I wanted to, in this video, take a step back to gain some perspective on the experiences as a whole and so that I can try to improve both my performance and my personal experience of being at these conventions. I also wanna share it with you, dear watcher, because I feel like we're always constantly trying to put ourselves out there in some way or another and it can be really scary and if sharing my experience can help just one person have some creative confidence, then that would make my nerd heart so happy. So I have three main takeaways and the first one First one is that my insecurities are real and they are absolutely impacting my art. I get stuck between this place of wanting to feel acceptance in that I am good enough as I am, but then I also am like on the other hand, well, I know I can be better and so I've got to be better before what I am is good enough to be accepted. And putting cosplay on an imperfect body or not playing the right notes or having a memory slip are much easier to deal with in the comfort of your own home when you're just making content. You can change the camera angle or just do it again. But in a live performance setting, you get one shot. I definitely feel like I've overcome a lot of things and I've shown up and done the thing. Like in the past, my insecurities would stop me from even getting out the door. So I'm really excited and proud of myself for getting out the door. Um, but now I'm trying to work with myself and figure out how to work through these um, feelings because they are ruining my experience it is how it feels. I get so focused on what other people are thinking that I can't enjoy myself. I get wrapped up in telling myself harmful things and by the time I'm done, some experiences I feel like just totally drained and awful. I feel really disappointed in myself and even though I like got the opportunity to be on stage and to share this joy that I have with all of these amazing people, I feel like, wow, if I had presented differently, if I looked a different way, if I was prettier, had a better cosplay, had a more expensive, elaborate, or sexier cosplay, or if I performed better, or all of these lists of things that that I tell myself, if, if any of those things were better than the experience would be better. Like I worked so hard to get on that stage and then I feel like I blew it in some way because I wasn't perfect. However, these inner mean girl voices may have a lot of awful things to say and I'm sure there are people out there who have judgy thoughts towards me. But the reality is, is that not one single person has ever come up to me and been like, you're ugly and you suck. In fact, it's always the opposite. I get so many people coming and talk, telling me how awesome it is to hear their favorite anime theme or video game music played live on the cello by someone dressed as the cosplay. And I get my photograph taken by a lot of amazing cosplay fantasy photographers and they post it on their pages and it gets a lot of great comments that people are so genuine and kind. The reality is, is that I will always strive to be my best and comparing myself to others is poison. There can never be anyone else exactly like me. I have something very unique to offer and it brings joy to people. My hope for the future is that I can work, continue to work on these insecurities so that I can also personally enjoy the performance as much as hopefully everybody else is and I can let go of some of this fear or letting my interpretation of what people are thinking or judging me for cloud the moment. So that's my takeaway number one. Insecurities, they, I've been working on them. They are getting better. So I wanted to say like, it's, it's not an entirely negative thing. It's just something that I noticed that like, wow, now looking back, I, really wish that I had just enjoyed the experience because at the end of the day, I'm still here now and whether or not I had decided to enjoy it or like let that stuff go, life goes on. So that's my takeaway number one. The next main takeaway is that I need to prioritize my own personal well-being, like my mental, physical health because this year has felt very busy 
I started off the year teaching full time on top of my wedding freelance business. And then I'd had my Cello Cat online brand that I kind of really um, started during the pandemic when I had a lot more free time. And I was doing all these really epic cinematic videos and I was buying a lot of really expensive costumes. And, you know, as I got busier and busier and things started to pick up, I had to let something go. And so eventually I did quit the full time job. But that came with other changes too because then my financial situation changed and I really had to prioritize the gigs that were paid. And Cello Cat, as much as I love Cello Cat, it's not the same as the other gigs that I have. Um, and so I definitely felt like I added all these Cello Cat performances, but I didn't stop. You know, I literally had a weekend where I had five performances and I would like go to a wedding and then go to another wedding and then go play a Cello Cat show and then go to sleep and then do it again the next day. And I felt like I was always run, rushing to the con late and I didn't have a lot of my marketing materials ready to go. Like I was there performing and I was doing my best and I was there, but I didn't get the sign printed that said, find me on YouTube. And so like there, I did get better at that going along. Um, I was able to put like a little QR code on my cello for the final one. And any of the very, very first con I did, I had no idea and I didn't have any merch to sell. So I, I have gotten better at that along the way, but it's again something I need to do even more, especially things like hydrating and eating healthy and resting. At this point in my career, most of the conventions I'm at aren't really paying me to be there. They might be giving me a little bit to help offset the travel or whatever costs, um, but I'm definitely, it is an expense to go. And so because of that, I feel like every minute that I'm there, I need to be maximizing that time. So like I went to Anime Banzai, it was three days long, they gave me a hotel room. It's only an hour away from where I live, but I, that was one of the things I had asked for, was like, can you give me a hotel room in your hotel block so that I don't have to use so much energy traveling? And so they were like, yep, of course, that's great. And then once I was there, I was like, I don't want to leave because I'm here, I have a hotel room. Like, so I just drank Red Bulls and coffee and ate the con food. And by the third day, I was so dehydrated. I was so sick from this food that was just not nourishing my body. I was not resting very well. I was like always feeling like I needed to be doing something with my time while I was there. Whether I was like performing or sitting at my merch booth selling or talking to people or in my hotel room, like making content or vlogging or like preparing a cosplay. Like I just did not take any rest time. And by the third day, I literally had like an experience of vertigo where I had to get in bed and turn off all the lights because I like the orientation of the world was not right for a minute. I think it was literally like fatigue and dehydration. And so once I kind of got through that, I just went home and I missed almost all of this third day because I'd pushed myself too hard. And so my goal, you know, in these coming year and years is to continue to do these conventions and do more. And if I, you know, if I did five conventions this year, um, you know, that's what one every other month ish. And so it's like, if I'd like to get to a place where I'm doing one a month and I can't, I can't go like all out and get sick every single time because I'm pushing myself so hard. I need to approach it from a place of sustainability. How can I continue to do this and come away feeling energized and excited? And I do have to say that on the last one, I think I did a really good job with that. I drove down to Vegas and it was exhausting because I drove down and got a hotel room for one night and then played the show the next day and then drove home because I had a gig the next day. But I was so careful. I made sure to not bite off more than I could chew. Like I only was playing two songs during their opening ceremony. And I only took like one cello. I made sure I was really prepared. And I literally cooked all my food at home and took it. And then I warmed it up in Mavericks. Even the next day food, I literally took a cooler and kept it in the car with everything that I needed so that I could feel good and have the energy I needed. And I didn't have to make any choices that would impact me and make me feel like less good or tired, anything like that. Like, so that was awesome. And I want to continue on that path. I also need to get stronger. I never really thought about being a musician as a physical, like athletic sort of thing, but the more that I am performing often and for long periods of time or like big shows where I'm like center of attention performing, I'm not only am I performing, but am I, I like playing music, but I'm performing like in a, almost like in a 
comedic sort of way. Like I'm an entertainer, full on entertainer. And I need to bring lots of equipment. I've had to bring my own PA. Sometimes I bring a, a TV screen to show my videos on. I bring laptops. I bring all my merch boxes to sell. I bring multiple cosplays. Like I bring so much stuff and sometimes just carrying all that gear in by myself and getting it all ready. And then all of a sudden I have to play now that it's just exhausting. <laughs> and so I, this year I've kind of been an on and off gym goer. Like I, I want to do it. I know it's important, but now I feel like I have a new goal, which is to get stronger so that I can lift all this stuff and carry all this stuff and play for longer periods of time without exhausting myself. My final takeaway is probably the hardest one to talk about because I feel like it's very taboo to talk about any mistakes you make as a musician. We want to have this facade of perfection and the reality is, is that we're not perfect and uh, I'm definitely not perfect. But I fe have felt that because of the busyness of this year and having to prioritize money making gigs and then I had to practice a lot for those. I had to learn so much new music and arrange new music and all of that that I felt like my cello cat stuff as far as like musical preparation definitely fell to the back burner way more than I really wanted it to. And since I only had five performances, you know, a lot of time would go in between and my muscle memory would atrophy and I'd have to rebuild up that repertoire every single time. And I didn't really have that time, all, like always. I also got married this year, so planning and executing my own wedding and going on a honeymoon, like I... I didn't have as much time and so I'll, what was happening a lot is I'd, I'd crash prepare the week before and that's just not, it's not healthy on my body, it's not healthy for my mind, it doesn't, it's not good practice <laughs> to do that because uh, I found that I would have memory slips or I would get confused or I would miss things. I'm um, also standing and playing, um, it's if you're not practicing like that, which I, I admit I did not practice as much standing and playing as then I ended up doing. And I sometimes I wouldn't know. I'd go, I went to a convention and I kind of had every intention of sitting and playing. And then I got there and I realized it wasn't, there wasn't literally space and it wasn't going to work very well. And so I ended up standing, but then all the practice I had done is essentially kind of like a little bit off because it's in a different position. And then I'm trying to perform and the cello is very... Uh, unsecure and I'm playing really difficult music. Um, it's one thing when I'm playing pop music and I'm playing the groove to stand up like I do with my band string effects. Um, but when you're playing like a really intense fast like a like Halo or something like it becomes much more difficult and so I definitely felt like my musical performance wasn't to the level that I wanted it to be. And so in the future, I hope that naturally this will become better because I get more performances, so then become more frequent and then I practice more. Uh, just naturally it forces me to. But I also wanna incorporate more live streams. I wanna make sure that I'm warming up and playing something from my Cello Cat rep every single day. And also, this is kind of like a, a around the corner way, is I want to take a look, a deeper look at my finances this year and really cut down as much as I can um, so that I don't feel the stress of needing to take every single paying gig because that will help me get more balance. If I want to take a weekend to go to this convention and be there and be present, um, I don't have to be rushing between wedding and performance and wedding and performance and I can actually just be there because of the times that I can just enjoy the con are really the most rewarding. And so that's that's kind of my goals there and takeaways. Um, I want to wrap this up in saying that I vlogged or at least attempted to vlog almost every single convention. I've posted, I think, one or two of them and I will, I think I'm going to put a, together a few more. And the spirit of the takeaway is that even though I'm watching the videos and I'm like, oh, I messed up there or this looks different there, um, you the, the true takeaway is that the feeling of playing live, like the way that I remember it and the way that I remember the energy in the room and like how it was landing to me is very different from what it is on the, on the video. And I think that's because you cannot actually capture a live performance really truly. I think we've all experienced that where you like were at a concert and you like took a phone video and you got home and it was like and the lights were all blown out. Like, it's just not the same. What I remember was really magical and special. And then sometimes what's on the video is very flat. 
uh, literally, like the acoustics in a live space that is not meant for music. It's a hallway in a convention with, you know, really tall feel ceilings and the glass partitions and, you know, tile floors and things like that. Like when you when your iPhone captures that sound, it's not full. It's not the warmth. It's not you don't get the actual distortion of the electric cello. You don't get the warm fuzzies of, of your my acoustic cello and um, also just like the way it looks. The lighting is terrible. You know, like this is great lighting. I look awesome in my house. Everyone does. I mean, if you take the time. Um, but in a live situation, it doesn't. And so it's easy to see, see flaws and criticize. So anyway, those are my takeaways from this past year performing live as Cello Cat. I'm so excited for the future. And I hope that if I'm playing somewhere near you that you come out and see my show um, because I think they're going to be the best yet this year. And um, I figured I'd finish out this video with so showing you some of my best and worst moments from conventions this year. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I totally messed up and my panel is starting in like one minute and I'm rushing to my hotel room because I left my bow because I was using it with my white cello last night and I didn't put it back in the case with my electric cello, which is what I'm playing on today. So just grabbing it really quick and heading back. Funny story. Yeah. We have no SD card. <gasps> so he went and he didn't Walmart. <laughs> yep. Still on my computer though, huh? Yeah. No. My bad. No, I'm glad we figured it out. Yep. Before it started. Most people laughed sort of at my dumb jokes. That's a success. That's in what my you book. Can go for. Like, <laughs>